Welcome back to DBC. Today we are continuing with clean language. And today we're going to really dive into all 12 of the clean language questions, some of which we've already covered. So we're going to start with a quick review of what we've already talked about and then transition and fill in the rest of the 12 questions. So the first main component of the questions we're looking at, uh, which we've already discussed the first three, are what are called developing chapters. And the metaphor here is of sort of, if you've ever developed a, a photograph in a dark room, sort of the picture kind of coming to be more clear. Uh, excellent. So we spoke about uh, name and location already. So the idea being, and what kind of X is that? Right, and so if this is X, what kind of X is that? And is there anything else? And where is X being the first three questions? And then we want to next move on to inviting them into to providing a metaphor. And it's done in a very specific way. So once we have like these symbols and locations, they might even offer their own metaphor. Like, oh, it's like blah, 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 whatever. Uh, and we can invite them. And the, the, the wording here is very important. The wording is, and that's X like what? And the, the intent here is to ask this question slowly. So, and that's comfortable like what? As opposed to, and what's that like? Because the, and what's that like sort of opens up too much for, for the, the person that we're talking to. So say, and that's calming or that's comfortable like what is inviting them to provide their own metaphor. Um, so, but before we hop in that, you wanna ask a few questions of, and that's X like what? Or is there anything else about the calmness? And we're looking for an adjective there as opposed to an abstract con uh, concept, which might already be a metaphor. So for example, you wouldn't say, and that's like a box of chocolates, like what? Like it, they're already giving you the metaphor. So an adjective there. Next step is to look at the relationships between symbols. So if we are operating, or if we've been provided with uh, two or more different symbols from the client, so the idea here is to ask them actually a closed question. So is there any relationship between X and Y? Because there might not be. We don't want to assume that there is one. And furthermore, to assuming there is the next relationship question, which again is still a developmental question, is and when X, what happens to Y? So now we have the name and address uh, metaphor, which is, and that's X like what? And then any possible relationship. Is there any relationship between X and Y? And if so, and when X, what happens to Y? Next big chapter, so we're kind of leaving the development questions aside, is to look at sequence, source, and intention questions for our clients. So the idea is that the sequence questions is designed to stretch time in ways that allow the person to find missing or unconscious information. For example, so sequence here, working with time. And when, and then what happens or what happens next? So the idea is when they have something in their head, we wanna sort of establish a temporal line, right? So what's happening after this happens? And what happens just before X? And this is really powerful because the person will become mindful in their own mind, obviously, about what's going on in their own head, their own internal processes. So they're drawing their attention inwards. And then there's the idea of a source question. So we have the sequence and then the source is, where could X come from? And really cool, this is emphasizing being clean and not leading them in any direction. So for example, if we ask a question, and where could that hat come from? The authors are by five different answers, types of answers they could give, for example. They could give a time, they could give a place, they could give a person, ancestry or origin, or they might even have something aside from that, which could be, oh, my tendency to hold things is where the hat came from. So final type of questions are intention questions which is uh, great when there's a desire for something to be different. So the intention questions are, and what X, sorry, and what X, and what would X be like to happen? And what would you like to have happen? And then the, the important thing here is for you to focus on what they do want as opposed to what they don't want. And uh, a metaphor given here is a grocery list. Think about when you go to the grocery store or the grocery list, you write down what you do want, not what you don't want, because what you don't want could be an infinite list, right? And then further with the intention are necessary condition questions, which is, again, directing the client toward their own internal models in seeing how they relate to the, uh, the rest of their sort of internal landscape. So that would be, and what needs to happen for X? 
And furthermore, can X happen? And what is the first thing that would need to happen? And so those, that, that's the basic 12 questions. And we're gonna move on next time to sort of talk about, okay, we've got all these questions, but now like, what do we do? How do they operate in a larger context of a session? How can we move forward with them to look at change or other things? So thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.